guys, Betsy here with Unique Paper 15. Today's video is kind of a special one. I am going to be making custom envelopes. I am deciding which, which size I want to do on that little grid right there because I want it to be a larger envelope than normal. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out the size I want. Confirm it's the right size and I'm showing you here. That should be about good. And I'll have all the dimensions in the bottom. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut the size that the grid told me to. Takes just a second to trim that out. And I'm gonna use that new envelope maker that I showed you guys in a haul I recently did. This thing is so easy. You literally measure it up, score, punch, rotate, score, punch. It is so simple. Just trimming the edges and then of course the point. This uh, envelope maker, it allows you to make very, very tiny ones and very small ones. It's very cute. I'm lining up a Tim Holtz Crazy Bird stamp and also that envelope template that I recently got from Michaels. I just want to make sure that I have enough room to write her name and her dress because it's kind of a long one. And I want to go with something very whimsical. So. The Tim Holtz Crazy Bird stamp with those <laughs> eyes that they just say, like, are you serious? I mean, that's, or what? That's what I think of when I think of this stamp. So I'm going to do something cute like that. So I stamp them out a few times in um, Versamark, or Versafine because I'm going to be doing some watercoloring. And I'm lining up a sentiment that says, are you kidding me? I thought that was a perfect sentiment and that came from a Gerda Steiner um, stamp set with the unicorn she did. It's I, I believe a birthday stamp set but I took that sentiment from there. Now I'm just taking out some individual alphabet uh, letters I have and I'm laying out fly where. So when I'm done stamping it it's gonna say are you kidding me fly where? And I do um, a little question mark and exclamation point there. Takes me a few tries because these stamps just do not want to stick. I guess I've used them too much. So there you go. You can see it's nice and dark. Everything's laid out. I've got my painter's tape onto my clipboard. This is the only like wood back I have, which Christina Warner always tells us when you're going to do some watercoloring, put it on like a wood back. So I use my clipboard. I'm going to start off with um, some blues and you'll notice that this time I'm using just my regular like basic watercolor palette that I got from Michaels. I'm not going with anything fancy, not my zigs because I feel that I have more control with watercolor. So here I'm just doing some basic light blue and then on the beak a little bit of like a tealish color and you'll see what I'm going for. The, the more this video progresses, you'll see the, the kind of look I'm going for. So I'm just, again, adding some light, light blue. Everywhere that there's um, like a shadow mark or where the, the artist has, has shown us that he's giving like extra lines or shadow um, pieces there. So I'm making those parts darker and I'm trying to make the center of his face and around his eyes lighter. And I always come in with my paper towel and I dab off because I wanna see which colors are saturating and also I want to lighten some areas up because I wanna blend it with different shades of blue. So you can see I'm holding my little, I guess my cup lid there. I use that as my palette because it's simple, it's easy to put a few little colors in and um, you can always wash it out with a rag. So I'm using my water brush to just bring in some more water to help them all blend together. And I've almost got this bird blue. <clears throat> so now I'm just creating some shadow under his beak, which there should naturally be shadow under his beak. And I'm bringing in some lighter blue, almost like a lavender to give him like a bluish purple effect. I really want this bird to be whimsical, just a funny looking bird. And I want her to think when she receives this, how cute, how funny. So I'm gonna make him look like a little 
crazy bird, which he is. Now, I'm coming in under the eyes with some pink. I want him to look exhausted, and I'm also doing the whites of his eyes a little pink. You know how when you're just completely exhausted, you have the red eyes? Well, I want him to look like that because he has either been flying so long or he's just in shock that he's going to have such a long flight because this card here is going to be going all the way to the Netherlands from Florida. So that was my whole concept behind that, giving him those red eyes. <clears throat> And now I'm just coming in with, I believe it's the greens. Let's see here. Just mixing my paint, yes. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to fill in the background. And I'm going to just do a loose water paint everywhere around where I'm going to put the address. And you can see where the painter's tape is. I block that off for the stamps so that the postage won't be interrupted. So now I'm just framing where the address should go. Of course, I'm gonna dab it off. I don't want it to be um, too dark. And in the light, in the middle there, where the address is going to go, I'm gonna give a very light, light, light pink, just to highlight it and make it look cute and that it's just not a blank space. So I'm framing that out a little bit. And you'll see, see I, I dab it off, so again, it's not too much. <clears throat> Okay, now I'm taking out my Copic multi-liners and I just wanna clean him up. I wanna go over all the black lines because sometimes when you watercolor, it almost washes away or it mutes that black. So I just wanna make him look nice and crisp again and give him the black lines on the beak and the shadow and the wings and the hair and just make him look really detailed and crisp. Okay, now I'm just going over the actual font stamps. I don't want that to wash out either. And I'm not sure how this is gonna hold in the mail. I'm going to do my distress glaze over the whole thing at the very end, but I just wanna darken everything that I can. Taking off the painter's tape, and now I'm grabbing my sticky note with this very long address, and I'm thinking, okay, I need how many rows? I need five rows. So I take a pencil and I very lightly had marked out where I needed each line. So now I'm just going to do some freehand script. I did not want to do brush script on these and make these look, you know, like fancy envelopes. I wanted them to be very fun and whimsical types of envelopes. So I write out her name and her address and now I'm going to assemble the envelope and I'm going to use score tape because I want this to really hold up in the mail. And I fold it together the way it should be. And I use my bone folder to make sure that the score tape is gonna stick and this envelope is gonna stay together for this very long journey it has. And that's it, I'm showing you the size of the envelope. That's done. And that's my final piece right there. I'm showing you where the stamps go and you see he is getting ready for the journey. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like, subscribe, and share. Thanks so much. Have a great night.